Hey everybody, and welcome to a new video. And today we're gonna do part five uh, before they're gone. And I didn't think I would do this volume, but I found a couple more titles that I thought would be worthy to bring up to you guys' attention. So if you haven't seen this series before, this is basically a series where I talk about the seventh generation of video games before they're cleared out of GameStop, uh, and you can buy these games on the cheap. You know, so um, I'm gonna show you the titles I got here recently. And some of them are not so recent. Some of them I may have forgot to show in some videos. But if you can find these games at GameStop um, they, and complete, I mean, you will get them cheap there. So, anyways, guys, let's get into it. Alright guys, so the first game on the list is uh, a beat-em-up game for the Wii. Uh, may not look that good to a lot of folks, but it still is pretty fun. And that is Pirate's Plunder uh, for the Wii. Uh, Co-op beat-em-up game um, kind of reminds me, I would say, I'm not thinking like uh, Guardian Heroes, nothing like that, not on that level. But you know, there's something something decent at least, I would say. I guess it doesn't really remind me of anything besides a regular beat-em-up. Um, I think it's a step above generic, but it's still fun enough. I mean, it's four-player co-op, which is nice. And also, um, the, like that's the only downfall for me was that um, it doesn't let you use the classic controller, but still, you can flip the Wii controller down like a, like a regular uh, Nintendo controller and play the game like that, so it's pretty cool. But anyways, if you like what you're seeing here in the footage, um, you can pick this one up at a GameStop if it's there uh, for around, I think, less than five bucks, so that's pretty nice. Next game here, probably one of my favorite 360 games that I didn't mention in my previous video. Um, and the last game to have Michael Ironside do the voice of this character, and that is um, Splinter Cell Conviction. Uh, I think this is the best one in the series. It was kind of like a, a cool send off at first. I mean, they kind of rebranded the series in a way. Uh, they, they changed the voice actor for the character, and that kind of like, that kind of kills it for me in a way, because if you guys remember Cyclone Filter, uh, the guy who did the voice for Gabe Lake, Logan in the first three games. Um, that dude was badass, man. He had a husky voice, man, but it was still like, it fit the character, it was great. But once you change that, that out, man, just, just got, it just didn't feel the same. So I felt this was the last really good Splinter Cell game. And if you can find this out there um, at GameStop, it's fairly cheap as well. But another one to look for on your list. Um, I think this is an easy one to get into. It's not as a... Uh, uh, the technical as the other games, I would say this one's more of like um, if people want to start the series, uh, they could pick they could pick up this one, uh, even though the story is already prog progress along. But anyways, it gives you a recap. The next game here, um, I don't think I talked about this on in my previous videos, um, but um, this is Splatterhouse uh, for the PS3. Now here's the thing about Splatterhouse: if you can find it on the, the PS3 at GameStop for, for right now, it's going for around fifteen dollars. If you find the Xbox version there, 360 version, it's going for five dollars. So keep your eye out for that. But what's cool about this game is not only you're playing a re-imagination or just a remake of the Splatterhouse series, but it, you can unlock the original three games on here as well. So you're getting four games uh, for the price for the price you pay for it. Um, just to let you guys know, Splatterhouse does. The, it starts off a little rough the first couple of levels. You, it doesn't really give you too much instruction, but as you get past those levels, the game really picks up. But at the same time, even if you don't like the games, I mean the game, uh, you can go back and play the other the other original games, and that that makes the package worth having. So uh, if you see this one out there, definitely pick it up. Um, good old Splatterhouse. I actually want them to make another remake of it. One is a little bit more um, really dark, you know. But this one was kind of comical at first, but still it, it was it was good. But anyways, Splatterhouse. Uh, next one here, got this by chance. I forgot this existed, but this is a fe the Fear Files uh, from the Fear games. Uh, this is an alternate story to Fear 1 um, of the ending, I believe. And um, even though it's non-canon now because Fear 2 came out, um, it's still cool enough to play to kind of see what they were going, they were kind of like going with in the series and everything like that. So um, you guys know I love the Fear games. Uh, some of my, my favorite first-person shooter games out there. Um, they're actually terrifying and it's just like really kind of trips you out in a way you never know what's really real until sometimes it's right in your face in this game but anyways if you see this one out there um, especially a game so I think this one came around five I think it was five or ten dollars uh, probably less than that but I can't remember <clears throat> all right um, 
I talked about the sequel in the video, but I didn't talk about this one. Um, this is the first game that kind of started off the series in a way, I guess. Um, this is Sonic uh, Sega Sonic Sega All Stars Racing, which is the first game in that series. Um, they actually made they made the sequel transform, and then they made the team racing one, which wasn't very good. But this one is a really good one. I, I, I like the second one the best transform. I talked about that in the previous video, but this one definitely worth getting. Um, you see this one out there. Um, I think Sega has made some of the best kart racing games out there. I mean, seriously, I mean, they just Sega has so many good ideas. I'm happy that they're a third party publisher now. I mean, even though I liked them when they were a system developer, but man, as a, as a third party force, man. They really just put it all out there, man. Their products are like just top quality. And I would say this is probably, these type of games are some of the best kart racers out there. So like I said, if you see it out there, game stop, pick it up. All right, I picked this one. I had, I put a, I put a thing on, on Twitter where I asked people if I should pick this game up for the price it was going for, which was pretty funny. Um, I've always wanted to play this game and I've seen it played before, but the cover this looks sick alone. I love the cover for it. This ended up being 99 cents at GameStop, and they're probably all over the place. But if you don't have this one, I think you should pick it up just for a single player play. Um, Battlefield 3 um, for the PS3. Now, I picked this one up because um, I like to go through the story mode of these type games. Uh, sometimes they have a really fascinating story, and it's a lot of fun. The multiplayer in this game is still active to this day, which is actually really cool. A lot of people still playing it, so that shows you uh, how much people really like this game. Also, one of the levels in this game, and this is a first person shooter, but there was a level in this game where it's called going hunting or something like that, where you find it in, in the freaking aircraft. Dude, I was like, man, this is insane, man. I was like, man, that, that was great, dude. So it really like, that was a really cool part in this game so far. I just got past that level. But anyways, for 99 cents, pick that one up. Um, also, I, I kind of got, um, I kind of got pushed into picking this one up while I was at GameStop. I wasn't going to initially pick it up because my coupon wasn't working, but the lady made an exception and uh, the, the $5 coupon went towards this. This is Portal Part 2 um, for the PS3, also available on 360. Now, I picked this up because I wanted to try something new. Uh, it's like a, I think it's like a puzzle type uh, platformer, I would think. Uh, I played briefly, I played the first game briefly, but um, I thought I'd pick this one up, you know, say try something new. Uh, you guys know more about this one than I do, so let me know in the comments what I'm getting myself into. Um, it looks weird as hell. So, yeah, Portal 2. Next we have here, Call of Juarez, um, Bound, by, Bound in Blood. Is it Bound in Blood? Yeah. This one is pretty cool because it takes place during the war. And uh, these brothers, uh, their their home is going to be like pretty much in the middle of the war, so they're trying to go and protect it. And um, I don't know too much of the story past that. This game seems to have, it used to have a multiplayer aspect on it. Uh, but one of the re real reasons I picked it up was because uh, Techland, the people who did the Dead Island games, they actually worked on this game. So I like their work, so I wanted to pick this one up. So um, I haven't played it. Yeah, I actually played the Cartel game, which everybody hates. I don't hate the Cartel game. Because I think it was cool. It had the co-op in it and everything. And I, actually, I'm, I need to look for that one because I don't think I own it. But um, if you see this one out there, I mean, if you like spaghetti, well, not spaghetti western, but just this whole western format in general, I think these this is probably a decent game to pick up for $5. It says $5 on here. I'm trying to get the camera to focus. You can barely see it, but there it is. Um, worth $5, right? All right. We're down to my last two. Thank goodness this video is going to be a bit shorter than the other ones because they were too damn long. But anyways, um, uh-oh. Something came up on my computer. I got to cut that off. Nope. There we go. Sorry about that. I got lucky and got this game a couple days ago. And um, for $5, it was fantastic. So you might find it your game's not for the same price. Uh, this is Gunslingers uh, for the Wii. And this is a four-player co-op rail game, uh, which is cool. So uh, nothing much else to say about it besides that. I, you know, um... The Wii is really known to have some really good rail shooter type games. You know, the system is perfect for that. And the original, the originally this game came with like a, a pack of two like uh, these these guns that you could put your Wii remotes in, and a really nice packages packaging and everything. But you don't ever see that anymore. But like I said, five dollars to pick this game up, I thought that was great. Um, I see most of it, most of the time I see it going online for like thirty to forty bucks. You know, so five dollars is is great for me. So. Um, I guess if you like the footage you're seeing here, nothing, nothing much else to say about a rail shooter. That rail shooters are pretty much self-explanatory. 
I would say they're mostly universal, so most of them are, are pretty much the same. Um, but a four-player co-op one is, is pretty badass. So uh, if you see this one out there uh, for that price, definitely pick it up. And last but not least, I don't think I talked about the first one. I mean, the P I talked about the PS3 version maybe on the channel before, um, but uh, Ninja Gaiden Sigma Part 2. But Ninja Gaiden uh, 2 on the Xbox is definitely worth getting. One reason why, I believe it's enhanced to where they, they actually did an enhancement for it so you'll play on Xbox One, which I thought was really great. So the game looks even better than it originally did. And this is kind of better than the PS3 version because um, there's more enemies on the screen and the game is more violent. So um, I don't know why they toned down the PS3 one, but they did add like char new characters in that one that you could use. But still, this one's worth getting. And I got, I, think, I believe it was like... Um, uh, 10.99 or 11.99 at GameStop, so um, I picked this one up, and um, once I get my Xbox Series X one day, I'll be able to play these games on that system, and they'll look a lot better, which is great. So um, I've been hunting a lot of 360 games because of the backwards compatibility that they'll possibly have on the Series X. You know, I think Microsoft has stopped the backwards compatibility right now until the Series X comes out, and then they'll start it up again. But that's why I'm hunting a lot of these 360 games that you guys are seeing here. But anyways, guys, that's it with the video. I didn't want to make it too long. Um, you know, GameStop is pushing this stuff out. That's why I'm telling you guys to try to get it at GameStop if you can. If you don't find it at GameStop, you can still find it at other cheap places, pawn shops, and maybe online for now. But once GameStop stops carrying it, that's when the urgency goes out. To, oh, my God, they don't have it anymore. I want this game. And then you're kind of like subject to secondhand sellers to kind of price it at what they want to. So now's the time to do it. Um, but anyways, guys, that's all I got for you in this video. Thank you for watching. Radical Reggie, and I will see you guys later.